<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Practice that about four times. All right, hang on. <laughs> All right, Derek here at Castaway Studios. Just getting to the end of my uh, allotted 24 hours of learning how to set up shortcuts to control a virtual set in vMix uh, in the Elgato Stream Deck. All right, so bear with me because the, I've just assigned all these shortcuts, but I haven't programmed my brain to know where they are and what they do. I've done some things to help me um, not get in too much of a kerfuffle. And task number one was to, to, to try and make it also all the shortcuts I needed were on one page of the stream deck and not on keyboards and uh, all over the place. So technically I shouldn't have to touch the mouse. I've done one thing and I've removed record start and stop from the stream deck. And I found, I got a really good example about 10 minutes ago why that should be done because um, when you're in a bit of kerfuffle and you're trying to look down the barrel of a camera and glance over here, you don't want to make a mistake and stop your recording. It's pretty irritating 20 minutes in when you've uh, realized. And it did just happen to me, but not necessarily because it was on here, because I removed it from here. And let's have a, we'll have a look later on in the shortcut settings to make sure you're not. I actually accidentally made this video in a staggered uh, 40 different uh, 40 different small segments because because I uh, changed the button that I was using to something else but it still maintained the function of record start and stop crazy huh anyway learning curve let's go to the set so I'm pressing a button here but you don't know it didn't work right well you know why? Because I'm already on the set. I'm a goose. I thought I was in this. Right? Too similar? Yes, too similar. But the difference is when I'm in this, it that is one input. But when I'm in this, this is actually part of a set. So if I go wide, the camera actually pans out. So I better put some, uh, let's get some TVs in here. And there's my... Um, Display capture from my laptop. This is vMix running here. And over there, we have a small, uh, we've got a little webcam that is hanging off with gaffer tape off my mic stand pointing at the stream deck. All right. Sorry about the focus going in and out and the wobble. That's life. It's just to show you it's not for a, uh, it's not for a professional production. All right. I'm going to get that title off for a minute. Uh, all right, so here we are. I've got, you can see on the, on, on your right, you'll see, oops, I just tapped the camera. You'll see on your right, there is a whole bunch of stuff going on. But on this lower left quarter, I've got four buttons. Now I have assigned those to be different camera positions in my virtual set. So there'll be another video uh, out there on virtual sets but just trust me I've, I've built the virtual set and that's where i'm sitting right now and so there are four camera positions readily available in your virtual set so this was dead easy so this is the wide shot so i've written wide within the the stream deck software i've put this text in the the actual thumbnail you won't you won't be able to see it but there's a thumbnail of the set which is very very handy once you get a whole bunch of different sets and different pages in the, in the Elgato for different purposes, right? So wide, and then there's the Zoom host, and that's where we started. Now, I didn't realize because I'd had the TVs off, so I didn't see them there, and that's why I made that mistake earlier. And then I've got TV stage right, which is the TV you can see on your left, and I've got that on the left button, and then TV stage left, which is the TV you can see on your right. Okay, so that's the button for that. So, so I know that I can go to these, st stick within these four. And one of the one of the strong reasons I removed the record start and stop is because it's pretty easy to make a little mistake. You can't get that far away from any button on this thing. Um, so the red one in the middle, that's the. I've got that program just to kick off an MP3 file. Okay, a license, a license paid for MP3 file. 
All right, so going over here, what I've chosen to do is program these. Now, this was this was an interesting process, uh, but once I found out through my um, through the fantastic vMix help uh, email, uh, pretty quickly found out how to do this. And these buttons here, I've got set to turn off layers or overlays within my virtual set. Okay, they're not just layers. They're not just layers and overlays with um, similar to this title uh, within the vMix output. They're actually within the virtual set. So if I turn that off and on, it goes off and on. And even me, I can have turning. And I've got the TV frames off and on and all that. And that's how I appeared magically in my gimmicky beginning. Right. So there's also, look, my son, this is my son's logo. I pinched off him that he uses for, for YouTube. So I've got that. That's a, that's a full rear screen thing. We'll get to that in the virtual sets. All right. So going back to uh, all the TVs, um, what I might show you now, well, actually, there's, there's a couple more buttons I might show you. Let me go over to here. Um, I've actually added three more at the top. You can see the title, right? But then you've got set. So we're on the set. Right, right now we're on set. And that's how I can roll around all these different views. But if I click this, that goes to a pure input. That's how I got into that kerfuffle at the beginning. So that's just pure input. So you've got a guest. I'm here. Uh, what's the stream deck now is actually the guest. And they're getting into what they're talking about. And then after, you know, after 10 seconds of this view, they know that I'm really interested and I'm nodding along and stuff like that. And then I can just, well, look, I pressed the wrong button. But then I can just go to them, assuming that's their face on Zoom or whatever you're using, or better still, vMix Call. So I can just let them do their thing. Um, and even if you're doing a, a screen capture, like uh, we'll go back to the set, if I'm on the other one, and you're doing a screen ca uh, capture like I am, but that screen is actually something interesting or a, or a video playing that I want to reference for a news show or whatever then you can have it on there, but you want people to just slip into, uh, I haven't got it set up, but you, you, want it, you want to press a button and you can slip into that full screen input just to make it a bit easier for the, for the viewer. So that's what I've discovered so far. And I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, so that's how I've done it. I've got one, I've got a cheat here for now. I'd probably change it for the TV frames one, which I, which I don't really need, but I uh, ran out of time. I've got a cheat, so my input or my overlay, I got that to put my um, my camera that's pointing at the Stream Deck on there, just in case I got into a kerfuffle. I could hit number four on my keyboard, and that would just bring up uh, that camera in the corner. In case I'm on a, another screen, I want you to see what I'm doing. And I probably will do that in a minute because what I'm going to do now is go to this one and show you the shortcuts. Let's have a look. So settings. I've learned uh, when, under, when trying to learn fast track this learning, which is great, even at my age, I've found I just refuse to be freaked out now when I see uh, lots of chaos and lots of choices. And, you know, a month later, you go, I'm glad they're all there because it means it's awesome, versatile uh, software. So these are the ones that I've already got in here. Yeah, it looks crazy, but I'll, look, I'll, I'm going to add one. Okay, so bear with me. What I'm going to do is you can't see this. Oh, you can if I do that. Well, you can't. I can't change anything while I'm in this setting because it's a vMix, right? Okay, so... Um, First thing I'll do is within my, I'm going to go to another page where I've got a blank. Um, you, you can see up the top there. You've got some. What I've got here is within the Stream Deck software, 
you've got to put in vmix the vmix plugin or app or whatever within that software and once that's in there then go to your page that's for that for that setting or that uh, virtual set or, or you know that show right and then you just drag you just drag uh, the vmix thing and, and assign vmix to whatever shortcuts you want vmix to control right so then once you've done that then when you go into vmix it will be connected and vmix will be in control of setting up that shortcut the stream deck will still allow you to um, assign text and stuff which has been great for me so i've te- uh, you know i've put uh, the different colored texts on there so i can have a look at it and also so that i can assign someone else to do some switching for a show and uh, you know i can just say well work it out it says it says you know zoom out so if you press that it's going to zoom out and things like that there's uh, my mind is blown just today to get to this very basic stage of knowledge about every step of the way it, there's this sort of oh my god that's going to be possible that's going to be possible you know, automatically controlling the PTZ camera to do a, sw- a slow sweep and all that just from pressing a button on your lap while staring at the camera. It's just amazing. So, look, all right, I'm getting too excited now. All right, so here we go. So I've got, I've got this up and I'm going to press fine. Okay, so this is where you normally press the button wherever you want and assign that button to be a shortcut. So I've got this spare, I've got a spare one here. I'm going to go to this top right one and you can just see and I'll press it. Now you've got to hold that down with the Elgato. If you if you just press it, it's when the button is up that it's assigned to, which you do not want. So I'll hold it down and press OK. So it's assigned it to, let me get that one up for you, to Stream Deck Button down be one a two so whatever that button that button there now will do whatever i ask it to do so function shall we pick something uh we better be careful here because i'm actually you know recording a show at the same time i don't want to mess it up so let's have it let's have it just play let's have it just play um that audio track so that that's probably a nice easy one. Uh, so I'm gonna click. I've got a choice of play or play pause. Now if I just click play and I'll go look, it works. Then I've got my mouse going and I'm desperately trying to find a way to shut that shut that music down. So I'm gonna click play pause. That's it. That's the function. Then we're gonna go to input and I'm gonna find the track. So this is where it gets very interesting. And up until about an hour ago, I didn't see the point. But now I really, really do. Because I'm going to be setting up lots of different shortcuts and lots of different, uh, on the keyboard and the stream deck, for different shows and different sets and all kinds of things. So you can actually check a box that says assign shortcut to input number, right? So... Let's say I want uh, to use the exact same set and the same shortcuts. I don't want to go in and change the shortcut to a, you know, if I've got five different audio track options in my input uh, choices. I don't have to go in and change all of that. So you can actually assign it to input number. So all you've got to do then is just make sure the input you want to use on that show is number, in this case, number 21. Right, so I'll assign that to input number. So if I've got twenty different musical tracks in there, I make sure I drag that and make that change that to input number twenty-one. Then it will play. Otherwise, it will play secret agent dot wave. No matter where I put it, no matter what happens, it'll just play that track. No matter what uh, input number is assigned to it. Sorry about the wobbling. I'm getting excited. And make a title. Call it. Uh, Secret agent. I've already started developing uh, some protocols that I think would be ideal, and that's I would put some 
a short a short title or or initials for the show that I'm using it for uh, or the set that I'm using it for. So I'll be building a protocol because the shortcut list gets longer and longer and longer um, and then and work out a certain code, perhaps even have it on a bit of paper on the wall and and then audio and, you know, like that. But for now, I'm just going to write secret agent. It's limited to how long the title can be. And then you've got another thing that's display. So I'll click thumbnail, and sometimes the Elgato generates a thumbnail if it if it's a, that kind of input, if it's a picture, a video, um, or a, a camera input, it'll make a, a thumbnail, which is awesome. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to see what happens here. So which one was it? It has changed the thumbnail, as you can see here up in the top right corner. It's taken away the vMix logo and made it just blank. So I would put text on there in a perfect world. And there it goes. And, and pause. I'm yet to find out how to make it go back to the beginning, but I'm sure there's a um, trigger thing that I can do that um, later on when I've got more time to work out how to reset that. Especially because if you're like me, you go, oh, oh, it's not time to play that. And then instead of just having my stream deck to operate the whole show, I've got to go and find that input and reset it at the beginning. That's just for now, 24 hours in. So it's all possible. So um, I wonder if it's worth giving you a little peep while we're at it. I don't normally do these how-to type things. I normally do a this is what I've been up to type things. So there's there's the... I'm sure you can see that, but there's the there's the stream deck uh, set up. Okay, so you can. So I this, this is the front page, so I can actually um, I've got that set that that's actually not a shortcut within VMix that button that you can see there that actually just launches the software right. So that's page one. So there's the this is the group that I've set up for my vinyl shows uh, set and all that. And uh, within that is where I've been messing with the buttons. And this is C2. So this is the one I, it doesn't show you on the software, the automatic, um, the automatic thumbnails. So that's it there. So within that, you can change the text and the color of the text and all that kind of thing. I may as well show you as well vmix so you've got to make sure vmix is in there so if you wanted to set up another show you might uh, you might make a folder there so i'll right click create folder i'll give it a name um show three such a dull thing to write there but there you go and i'll double click on that so there's a page that'll be show three so you just grab vmix shortcuts Look, you just keep filling it, filling it in, right? And every one of those will be linked straight away to vMix to use as a shortcut. If you don't do that, it, you won't be able to assign that button. And that's it. So if you want to, you want to keep one to turn your computer volume up and down or do other things on that page, don't put one of these on there. Just create it as a normal shortcut in the normal way. So that's that. I better make sure I'm on the right page again, or I'll end up in a kerfuffle. So I'll go to wide. Did I cover everything? I think I covered a fair few things. There's the title. Um so yeah, that's about it. That's that's what I've just learned in the last 24 hours. Check out the whole sets thing. That's the best. The virtual sets are I'm having heaps of fun there. And the more I learn, the more I'll be able to make it uh, tasteful. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for sticking around and um, I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Bye-bye.